you know, this is a picture, you know, this, this could be any enterprise network, but, you know, when you think about client devices and, you know, they're on a network, the whole point is to access applications and access them well, but there's several legs along the way. Um, and to really understand the full client experience, you need to understand, you know, the client devices as they connect over wireless, as they, you know, use network services in the campus like DNS, DHCP, Radius, ARP, and so on as they get onto the LAN, as they then get onto the WAN network and get onto a router or you know, off to a data center. And then finally, whatever application they're accessing, whether it's a public app or an app, app in the public cloud, private cloud or anything, or a unified communication app, peer-to-peer, -peer, anything like that. And all of these legs sort of have associated with them a lot of data, right? And so just with any kind of system that's gonna tell you something about client experience, and you know, uh, what's happening with mobile clients, you know, this, is, this is a sampling of some of the data that, you know, that's, that's sort of in the, in the realm of possibility to, to process. Right? So from the client perspective, you have you know, actual network data, actual packets that the clients are sending, so the real data. Um, you can generate tests from the clients. Right? They can do synthetic tests, and you can measure the, the uh, performance of those tests. Um, you can get data from the infrastructure, so from the wireless LAN controller, the switches, the routers, and so on. Um, log data. You can send syslog data from each of these different systems, like the radius server and so on. Um, from the WAN, you can get NetFlow. Um, you can you know, do trace routes and things like that. And then finally, from applications, um, some applications actually have APIs where you can get the ground truth right from the application itself that says, hey, you know, on your Skype for Business call, this was exactly your stream quality or your MOS score. Um, oh, w when you're using these kind of devices, on this, uh, these ASCOM devices, this is what the user experience was uh, when, when that was happening. So this is all the data. And what we've done in the platform over you know, the, the, the better part of uh, you know, the last, last year and, and beyond is really start to incorporate a bunch of these. So, Packet data is something the platform can take off a span or a mirror port. Um, Real-time metrics from the, from, the wire, or, uh, from the infrastructure, we take metrics directly from the wireless LAN controller, right? Um, you know, whether it's SNMP or Amon um, or, or those sources. We actually support, uh, we just added Extreme network support now. So we have Cisco, Aruba, and Extreme uh, in terms of support. Um, and then the rest of this is sort of just filling in the gaps. So we take metrics from directly from certain applications. Um, you know, Skype for Business, you know, uh, Cisco UC or CUCM, um, a bunch of vertical specific stuff. So in healthcare, uh, clinician communication applications, we take the uh, data from there. Bedside monitors, we can take data from that application. Um, and in, you're telling those applications to send data to Voyant. To Voyant, right? exactly. You're, you're not like seeing that in line and going, oh, I see data. No, 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 no. This is extra data. Extra yeah, data. exactly, exactly. So the packet data can tell you a lot about applications as well, right? Because you can ID the application and try and reconstruct what the score and what the user experience was from the packet data. This is extra beyond that of saying from the server itself of the application, send us some data which just tells you directly from the application perspective what was the user experience of all these clients. So do you sit in line, like if you're getting a flow from a controller, right, and, you see, and, and that's the only flow you're getting, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if you identify Skype for Business yep. data um, in that flow, yep. do you then go back to the customer and say, hey, look, I see you've got Skype for Business data. Let's figure out where that data is coming from and add that extra <laughs> stuff back in, or like, like are you soliciting once you see sort of interesting traffic, hey, I know if I see this, I, I want to go get into your call manager or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that, that happens, but more often we just ask them up front, hey, what kind of applications do you have? And hey, you know, some mm -hmm. of these applications, we can actually give you more insight from the, or about them if you send us data directly from the application. Okay. So just, you know, our, our general you know, policy is send us as much data as you can. The more data you send us, the better this will be. But you don't have to send, not every customer sends us all of these different data sources. Right, so that's that's sort of the, the 
the, the big aspect of it. But the better data, you know, we can't make up data, so <laughs> the better data that we get. <laughs> Probably good that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I started with that point, <laughs> that we don't do that. <laughs> so, cool. So then, you know, some, some other stuff that, that, that we've done. So syslog data from your radius server. So we added support for um, ICE, ClearPass, Free Radius, and Microsoft Radius, I think. <clears throat> so where you can just point syslog at us. And now that syslog contains extra information from the radius server around like reason codes and things like that, that we can correlate with the rest of them. Um, and we're working on DNS and DHCP, so info blocks and blue cat and sort of adding, adding that in. So that's, that's something we've added. Another data source is NetFlow data. So how do you take, you know, somebody's using Office 365 as an example, or somebody's using Salesforce.com. How do you correlate <coughs> that with the service providers that that traffic is being routed over, or the WAN interfaces that it's being routed, routed over? And how do you make that correlation between, well, User experience is good when you get routed over this service provider. User experience is not good when you get routed over this service provider. Assuming that you know, the wireless is fine and all that kind of stuff. So that's where flow data from the routers comes into play. And so that's a data source we, we, um, we support today. Again, the idea is just pick your you know, routers that are, that are critical and just point NetFlow data, again, at the, at the platform. And that'll get correlated. And then finally, uh, it's funny, actually, I think two years ago when we were here, somebody or a bunch of people asked us about, you know, how about software on client devices or like a sensor or something like that. And I think our initial tack was that, well, most of our, you know, most people like passive monitoring, like without having to put anything on client devices. What we've seen over the years is I think that's still true, that most people do like passive monitoring, as in like, you know, not having to install anything on customer devices. But the use case, especially in the enterprise side, has come up where, you know, hey, we manage these devices. So it's easy for us to deploy you know, agents on these things. And that gives us a different kind of perspective. It gives us the perspective directly from the client um, across you know, all, all of the things that the client goes through, as well as like driver information and additional data about the client and from that client perspective. And so we've introduced a, a client agent. And, and I'll talk about that in, in more detail. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what, we, what we've been um, up to. Um, so from a bingo perspective, I guess we've got all four, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe there's one, one more left <laughs> to, to, to kind of fill in. But, um, but yeah, you know, like the, the general you know, thing for us and, and what we've seen is that if you really want to get the full picture about client experience in an enterprise environment, you know, you need to be multi-vendor in the sense that not across one layer. Like for wireless, you know, people will typically be single layer or single vendor. For switching, they'll be single vendor. You know, for you know, radius, they might be single vendor, whatever. But what you find is that Wi-Fi, you know, radius, DNS, DHCP, you know, routers, applications, nobody is single vendor across all of those things. And so what we find is that it's, use, it's, it's necessary to be multi-vendor, so you get all those perspectives. Because all that data adds something different to the analysis and, and the insights. And the other side of this is um, you know, going to the data sources that matter. right? So there's one thing to say from the network to get all this like, horizontal kind of um, multi-vendor data that I was talking about. But there's the other side of, well, in sp specific customer verticals, you know, these are my most critical problems. You know, I don't know, in regulated industries, it's Citrix as an example. So taking data from Citrix and correlating that directly with user experience on wireless and, rout and routers and so on, that's the critical problem. And so that's the data you got to go get. Right? And so that's, that's our sort of general like, um, philosophy and, and the way we're building it, which is that you know, what are the most critical problems for the customer? There's some that are applicable to everybody. But in certain verticals, there are critical problems, too, where the application itself has useful data to give you to, to correlate. And let's take that into account. Yeah. So since we're looking at multi-vendor on the screen, yeah. <clears throat> um, yesterday both Mist and Arista, Mojo, um, you know, kind of gave us a look at their analytics and all of that. Mm -hmm. What's the um, feel when you get into a situation where somebody says, "Well, we already have analytics. Our vendor gives us analytics. 
Yep. I mean, what's the Nance answer for that? Well, the first, the flippant answer is, hey, you should bake us off against that, <laughs> that analytic system <laughs> and see which one is, is better. But, you know, the more long-term answer or whatever is just, I think the, the multi-vendor point is very important to us in the sense that... No, no I'm saying to customers, how do you... Yeah. You know, it's like, well, Mojo gives me what you're saying you give me. And yep. I'm saying, how do you answer that to a customer? Yeah. So to the customer, what are your most critical problems and where do they come from and what's the data involved? Does it involve data from an application? Does it involve data from a particular you know, server, which is a different vendor? Right? Let's say info blocks versus, you know, like I don't think most Mojo customers or whatever, or Arista customers are using Arista or Mojo DHCP as an example, right? Or they're not using Arista, you know, uh, what do you call it, Radius. So again, it's across the stack to say, you know what, it's not just, you know, it's fine to get the perspective from the wireless or maybe the switches or the routers or whatever it is. But the real, if you want to do client experience properly, right, the real key is getting all the important data sources. And each of them has something different to say and something deep to say because, you know, each of those is a very deep thing, right, whether it's routing, whether it's switching, whether it's a firewall. I mean, we haven't talked about that yet, but that's something where, we're, you know, the next data source to go after. Right, which is you know what's what's happening at the firewall, what's happening at the application, and so on. Well, I'll, I'll kind of take that one step further. Even how do you pitch into a client an, yet another product to add onto their network? So it's yet one other touch point yeah. they need to look at, one other touch point they need to evaluate, and then how do you balance that versus what analytics they may already have from their provider? And what if they conflict? Yeah, no, no, definitely, right? Uh, and we run into this all the time, right, <laughs> clearly. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, like for starters, you run into it with um, NMS, right? Everybody's got an NMS, right? You'll have solar winds, you'll have, you know, Airwave or Prime or something like that, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, you have to deal with, hey, the first question right off the bat is what's the difference between what are you guys giving me that X doesn't already give me? And, you know, to, for starters, I mean, even the big vendors are building analytics separately from their existing NMSs, right? So that's one you know, point to say that even your vendor or whatever it is, right, has a separate product for this, you know, compared to what you had before. But the other side of it is that, you know, the, the reason we started as a company, right, is that we kind of looked at, you know, we looked at two spaces. We looked at the data center space and we looked at the campus space. The data center space and looking at application performance and things like that was just super crowded. And there are a lot of like interesting companies there, whether it's Splunk and New Relic and AppDynamics and stuff like that. On the campus side, when you think about user experience, client to application or client to cloud, um, we didn't see anybody. We just saw the NMS systems. And the NMS systems you know, are more about infrastructure monitoring and raw data, setting thresholds, getting alerts, and so on. And we just saw a big, big gap in terms of, okay, well, the campus problem is really around wireless. You know, there's the WAN, and then there's client to application and figuring out where the problems are in between and connectivity and, and stuff like that, right? And if you want to examine that problem, it's going to take a lot more than an NMS just doing infrastructure monitoring, right? And so I think the two answers to that question is first, you know, there's, there's a big hole, right? You have nothing today or a customer has nothing for you know, correlating data across the stack, right across the, all of those layers. And then the second point is just, you know, at, at some point, some of the old tools will get obviated, right? And you know, an NMS, as an example, you know, how much value is it really adding or whatever, right? And so there, there is some consolidation points there, right? But yeah, no, that definitely it's, it's, it's something we have to um, uh, address at, at every environment. So you were talking about yeah. spanning ports. Yeah. Are you spanning every port? Are you spanning just uplink? I mean, how do you how do you call it? I mean, yeah, yeah. we got you know the all the data we get from the client to the AP. Yep. And then you pull off the controller, but you know, can how do you get in those gaps between then the controller and the one you know the internet edge or your WAN links? Yeah. So so it depends on what kind of deployment it is, right? With a controller based deployment, it's relatively straightforward in the sense that you know uplink of the controller you have sort of a choke point to get every client transaction out, right? So you don't have a methodology then to look at it somewhere else, maybe between the controller and say the data center. Oh yeah, yeah no, we do, exactly. So, so you can put so our, yeah. everything? To so it's up, the the, it's up to the it's up to the customer, right? But typically what'll happen is they'll say, look, I care about my wireless users, 
those are my most important users and that's the problem that I want to tackle. So I'll spend uplink of the controller to capture all of that. Some customers will be like, well, how about my wired users? Can I analyze something there? And so they might spend a few, like their wired right. VLANs and things like that, right? But, but I mean, um, you know, yeah. I think you talk to anybody who's done wireless for a while and they can tell you, hey, you know what? Half of the time we run into problems with the wired network. It's mm -hmm. wired network yeah. part. It's not, you, know, yeah. you go, hey, you spend a bunch of time proving it's not the wireless only yeah. to find out that, <laughs> hey, you know what? The I, wired was having I got, I got massive latency on my DHCP servers. Yep. It's run by another yep. group. Yep. And is there any way to, I mean, do you just try to help them pull that from the controllers or? No, no, I mean, th that's where spanning, e e like, again, if it's packet data, it's spanning data to, um, you know, from the wired VLAN. So you can directly do the comparisons. Hey, my wired users are not having this problem, but my wireless users are, or vice versa, right? To sort of so make that would those. require spanning in a lot of different That's ways. one way. The other way is send us NetFlow data, plus okay. send us like syslog data from your different servers. And so to do the DHCP example that you said, if we're getting syslog data from the DHCP server, we have data for wired and wireless clients that are going to that DHCP okay. server. And basically, we don't care. But the nice thing is, you know, if you have extra data with the spend, then you get even more analysis in terms of the, the transactions or, anything, or things like that. So right? it's not necessarily a requirement. Yeah. It's not a requirement, exactly. Because I've seen, I've seen companies pitch it and go, hey, we're going to span every port you have, and you no, almost no. end up with this <laughs> oh, you know, overlaid wired data no, network no, no, on top no. of your existing <laughs> data network, and you're buying thousands yeah. of additional yeah. hardware that then has to be yeah. plugged in everywhere. No, have, it's not. Okay. Like have you had anyone overwhelm your system yet with data? Like to the point of if I've got a customer, I work with a lot of He's EDUs. sitting right there. <laughs> I, 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 well, I was going to say, like, I, I work with a lot of EDUs, and you're looking at, you know, 200,000 connections, you know, right? The data generated from flow data and syslog data and all of that. I could just imagine the, the consumption that could be pushed towards you. Yeah. No, 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 for sure. I mean, our big university customers are probably, you know, the, the heaviest users of, from a data perspective. But, you know, it's, it's a cloud-based system. Um, I mean, there's on-premise as well, but, or private cloud. But even that's sort of, you know, tethered to the cloud in some sense. But mm -hmm. the idea is to build sort of horizontal scale-out. Okay. So we just have to be vigilant about adding that capacity to handle it. The AWS, the, something of that nature. Exactly, but exactly. Instantly scalable. Exactly, okay. exactly, right? So that's, that's the point there. It's just one of those things where sometimes you just, you didn't expect that much data to come from a certain environment and the culprit is sitting over there. <laughs> Who's it? That's Roel, I'm putting Roel, okay. Sorry. Yeah. That sounds about, that sounds like Roel, so. <laughs> so trouble back to that guy. Okay. How are you Sorry. looking on the uh, Meraki infrastructure support? Yeah, we're, we're talking to Meraki right now. So they've introduced some health APIs. So the, their health, Meraki health dashboard, um, they've built it on top of uh, publicly available APIs. I think they're still in beta right now. But um, so we're in talks with them. They've provided some uh, API data to us, which we're kind of looking through. You know, the, 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 in, the, the key thing for us is sort of, you know, to support another vendor. In an ideal world, you get sort of the same data Right, so Cisco, Aruba, Extreme, right, similar kinds of data, and so that's what we're sort of exploring with Meraki to say, okay, this is fantastic because we've been waiting a long time, um, but you know, will these APIs yield the same kind of data, or has this become like a custom, you know, integration or something like that? Okay. Which would be okay too, but I mean, it's just ideal, much better if it's the same. So, uh, good question though to pigtail off of that. How much variance do you see? amongst the vendors that you support and the, am the amount and types of data that you can evaluate from them? Yeah, um, I would say Cisco and Aruba are pretty you know, close or whatever, right, in terms of the, the, the data. Uh, Extreme is, is, is also close depending on what, uh, what do you call it, what software version you're at. And then you know, that's where, like with Aruba Instant, you know, certain things you don't get as much as Aruba controller-based. And then, you know, I'm sure with Meraki, it will happen where, you know, certain things you won't, you won't get, like, con compared to, you know, the, the controller-based systems and so on. So, but, but there's decent parity uh, amongst everybody. everybody.